Well, hello, my friends. Guys, happy, happy, happy Thursday. I'm Troy Brewer. Welcome, guys, to this special Thursday edition of The Prophetic Life. And I decided to go across all of our platforms because, guys, we have so many good things to celebrate. I'm so excited. And, guys, this is going to include uh, the Texas Ranger win. Like, why would we care? I want to tell you why. This is also going to include the 100,000... Um, followers uh, that were subscribers that we have on YouTube. And we're going to celebrate that. That happened last night. And then I'm going to show you the absolutely most profound, descriptive, prophetic verse I've ever seen for any year in the 30 some odd years that I've been doing this. Wait till you see this. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to give you so much hope. And it's going to describe exactly the day that we are living in today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, don't forget that if any time that if you need prayer or if you want to see about our resources, but if you need somebody to pray with you, call us. We have a whole room full of people standing by right now at 877-413-0888. Let's get started. Guys, last night, and I'm sorry to be so obnoxious for all my for all my baseball friends all over the world, but finally, after 62 years, the Texas Rangers finally one. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. And I want to tell you, it was a big deal. <laughs> Look at this. Look at I'm telling you, I'm sorry, but it was a blast. And I am so excited about it. And like, I didn't know if I would ever see it in my lifetime. I just didn't have any idea if that was something that we were ever going to see or if that was ever going to happen. And boom, it actually did happen. And so one of the things that I'm very grateful for, and I've been saying this all year, is the Texas Rangers were the only baseball team in the entire MLB that did not cave and buckle to the demand of having a um, a gay pride night at the ballpark for families. And then I'll be dipped if they're not the ones that won this year. Mm. Jesus has never woke, my friends. And I am so grateful for that. And I would say, way to go, Texas Rangers. So proud of you guys. But I want to encourage everybody to look all that stuff up and know that there was a huge battle that people had to fight. I mean, they ridiculed and persecuted and protested. And like, no, we're after all these families. And they said, no, we're not going to do it. And this is the year that they won. And so I'm just proud of them. And I'm just so grateful for them. Now, I'm also got to tell you, we're also, our whole media team here is celebrating in a tremendous way that last night we actually had our 100,000th 100, subscriber on YouTube. Yay! And I'm so grateful for that as well. That actually happened last night. And that's a big deal because we just started working on our YouTube. Though we've had it for a long time, we just never really taken it seriously. And this year, uh, our teams all got together and we said, hey, man, let's do this. And so we got serious. And I want to remind you that if you don't know our videos there, go there and check it out and see for yourself. Because just over the past um, well, we just hit our 8,500,000th view, and that's worth celebrating because, guys, we're preaching the gospel and we're sharing testimonies of how we're rescuing kids all over the world out of the horrors of sexual trafficking like we have been for 28 years. And we're making it look easy and we're making it look fun. And you guys go there and check out those videos. All of my pulpit teaching is there. And uh, you'll see it. You'll just see all the stuff. And it's all there on my YouTube channel. Go there and check it out because, guys, we're actually, uh, well, we're just excited about that. Our team has worked really hard on it. Guys, typically on The Prophetic Life, uh, it's a private community. And we do this on odx.tv. And uh, we have thousands of subscribers now. And I want to tell you what you're missing if you're not into odx.tv, and one is all of my prophetic numbers teaching. And so we have tons and tons of videos, like how many videos? We literally have thousands of videos there, literally thousands of videos. And we have all my conferences are there. I just got through with a conference last week in Valdosta, Georgia, uh, with Jerry Ann and Matt Webb and team. Uh, we had Richard Gordon was there with us. We also had Darren Stott was there with us. And I had a visit from my good friend, Paul Wilbur. I had a, good, a visit from my good friend, 
Oh, gosh. Who else did I have a visit from? Uh, Schwartz, Brian Schwartz, NFL football player, uh, Brian Schwartz, a prophetic voice. And you can see all those videos, all of my looking up videos, all those things are all at odx.tv. And then if you're at at least the stage two level, you can also join us privately every Tuesday and every Wednesday for a special question and answer session on a specific uh, topic. Like, like what? Well, like anything biblical, like anything prophetic, like uh, how about angels and demons and Nephilim and the days of Noah, the days of Lot, what does those things mean? And then we also do things like this. And I'm going to, guys, buckle your seatbelt because I'm about to show you something that you have got to see. Man, you have got to see this. Um, every year, I preach on the biblical numbers and I match it with the calendar and then I go through the scriptures and then we talk about it. So this year on the Hebrew calendar, it is 5784. We entered into that around September 16th. And when October the 7th happened, the incredible and horrific attack against Israel, I want to just tell you this, I was so blown away because the 5,784th verse of the Bible told us exactly that that event was going to happen and could not describe October the 7th any better than the headlines did. So do you want to see it? Get ready. I'm going to show this to you. The five, the 5,784th verse in the Bible is Deuteronomy 32.25. And I want you to think about this in light of the October 7th event. In the street the sword will make them childless. Guys, did y'all see the, the events that happened on the road as those Israelis were trying to drive through mobs of Hamas terrorists that were executing everybody on site? And then it says, in their homes, terror will reign. Now, of course, you and I saw the terrible things that happened from home to home and from house to house. And then it says, the young men and the young women will perish. Did you see what happened at the Nova uh, dance festival that they had. Did you see that? And then it says the infants and those with gray hair. Now we know that they put children in cages. We know what they did to the babies. And we also saw as they carted off old people as hostages and how they murdered so many of them. This is not only the perfect description of the horrors that happened on October the 7th to the nation of Israel. But it also describes the season that we're in right this second with the 5,784th verse in the year 5784. And that's the 5,784th verse in the word of God. And it's Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 25. What's your prayer directive? What do you think that God is telling us to do? Is there an answer for any of this? Oh, listen, the Lord saw every single bit of that. He saw all of that. And God Almighty keeps his eye upon Israel, the Bible says. Guys, let me show you what the next verse says. It says this, our prayer objective is this. God says, I will scatter them and erase their name from human history. You know what their name is? It's Hamas. Hamas is the Hebrew word for violence in the days of Noah. That's exactly right. You can find that word violence actually in the book of Genesis, where it's talking about in the days of Noah. And it says, and the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with Hamas. These are indeed the days of Noah. And this is why you need a prophetic community. This is why you need to be hooked up with good news with godly news in the midst of the mess that we are seeing on the headlines. Friends, do not be afraid. This is not a day to be afraid, but this is a day to be sober, to be serious, to know that Jesus is coming back soon. And between now and then we have to live in dunamis power and walk in the right things. Guys, everything is getting biblical. So we need to be on the right side of biblical prophecy. Joining me from, from directly across this room and the person that helps me that, to do the prophetic life is one of my daughters in the Lord, and her name is Miss Concepcion Jenkins. Hello, Connie. How are you? Hey, Pastor Troy. It's good Hello, to see everybody. You. It's good to see you. Look at all these people that are on here. I know. It's crazy. I'm so glad that you got to go across all platforms today. This is a really powerful word, and I'm glad that you got to share it. Well, 
listen, I'm about to go on a whole bunch of TV shows and tell everybody this. And if you want to go back, I would encourage everybody, Miss Connie, you were there with me on this. On Rosh Hashanah, I gave that word. Yes. And Rosh Hashanah was on September 16th. And we gave the 84th verse in the Bible. Yes. We gave the 84th verse in the New Testament. We gave the 5,784th verse. And then we also talked about, you know, the fours. It's the year of the open door and the hidden delet and the, the, the hidden ear inside of that. And we talked about all those things. And you can find that by going through our YouTube channel or you can go to odx.tv. We've actually been preaching this now for, well, uh, coming up almost two months. And then October 7th happened. Yeah. And it's crazy because you actually came out with several videos. Um, you did one prophetic word from your barn and you did one here at the church at Open Door Church. Yes, and every time it's like a deeper unveiling of what the Lord has shown you. And you've mentioned this scripture and no one had a grid for it. No one really knew how it fit in until we saw what happened to Israel on the 7th of October. And it's just like, whoa. Well, wow. We are seeing it now. Yeah. And I want to just tell you this. Um, it's undeniable. And while uh, there are pro-terrorists on all of our college campuses and flooding across our borders right now that are denying this happened, the same people that deny the Holocaust are denying that this event happened on October the 7th. They're saying, oh, they didn't actually do that. And uh, no, they actually did do that. And it was already in the word of God in everybody's Bible. If they knew where to look and if they respected the fact that God Almighty will use our measures or our cubit, right? And our cubit in this case is 5,784 and the Lord God Almighty is speaking. Yes, sir. He is. And I'm super excited to see how much more you unveil what the Lord has shown you for this year in our upcoming New Beginnings Conference. It is going to be amazing. And that's where you get to really deep dive and show everyone, hey, this is what the Lord has been speaking to me. This is what we need to be looking out for. This is how we need to be aligning ourselves with the Word of God and with His heart for this coming year. I do that. And I have done that every year now for almost 30 years. We've had a huge conference at the beginning of the year where, where we look at all the numbers and then we look at the scriptures that go with it. And then we say, what is the Lord speaking? I know that one of the things that God is speaking right now for this new year to come as we move into the 24 is I was mentioning dunamis power and the word dunamis is in the Bible 24 times. And as we, as we move on the Gregorian calendar into the year 2024 and we overlay it with the year 5784, it is literally power over darkness. But it's not the way that it used to be. It's completely, di it's completely different. The prophetic word that God gave me for 5784 is altered state. Everything is in an altered state. And of course, now we're seeing the altered state of Israel. The 5,784th word in the Strong's Exhausted Concordance is the word uh, uncertainty. It is the word uncertainty. And it's like, okay, well, you can see that in the headlines every single day. And again, we started preaching that before this thing happened on October the 7th. And then it was like the Lord consummated this message one week to the day afterwards on October the 14th with this celestial event in the heavens of the next great American eclipse. They entered into Gardner, Oregon and left Corpus Christi, Texas, which means the body of Christ, the place of the garden and the body of Christ. And God Almighty gave a word and it was seven days to the day. It was a ring of fire eclipse. And this unholy union of all these Islam of all these Islamic terrorists against Israel is called the ring of fire. And God Almighty answered from the heavens with his own ring of fire and given us his intention of what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. Yes, sir. I think that that is so powerful. I like I wasn't even aware that after that ring of fire uh, eclipse, I wasn't even aware of the fact that the enemies that were surrounding Israel were being called the ring of fire. And it's just the way that the Lord speaks through the heavens and the way he's so intentional about communicating to us, speaking to us is amazing. And we just have to get on his same page again, aligning with his heart, aligning with his word and understanding the way that he speaks to us, especially through the heavens. I love your teachings on that. And that's actually something else that's going to be at the New Beginnings um, Conference is you're going to be doing a star party during 
that like three day event. It's going to be amazing. And I'm sure you're going to be talking about the eclipses, especially the great American eclipses and the one that's coming up next year. I am, Connie. And one of the things that I got to tell everybody, if you're not sure that the Great American Eclipse or the, the Ring of Fire Eclipse and the Great American Eclipse that happened back in 2017 and now seven years later, this next Great American Eclipse is taking place. If you're not sure that this is a sign from the heavens, even though Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and also in the stars. Jesus was speaking prophetically into this day for all the doubters and all the haters and people that weren't sure of that. But if you're not sure of it, just be just be sure of this. When does it happen? It happens at Passover time and it happens happens on the date of 4-8, okay? So it happens on April the 8th. Okay, friends, do you, do you, do you this is going to sound crazy, but do you want to know what uh, Exodus 4-8 says? Exodus 4-8 declares to us, if they do not believe the first sign, they will believe the second. And that is Exodus 4-8, and it's actually on 4-8, so friends, we got to know this prophetic speech. We, we got to know that God Almighty is speaking today. And that's why you need to plug into this stuff. That's why you don't need to be afraid. That's why you need to have a prophetic community. That's why you need to be around people that are drop dead, sold out Jesus freaks that are not afraid to call good, good and bad, bad and truth, truth and a lie, a lie in the midst of a day where everybody has their head in the lap of the media called Delilah. <laughs> and it just makes you a blind entertainer, as my good friend Brian Schwartz always says. You want to be like Samson? You just be a blind entertainer. That's all you're going to be. And I don't want to be a blind entertainer, man. I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm not going to be afraid. And, uh, you know, man, I, I see the Lord talking through all this stuff, and it, it just encourages me so much. I am... You know, you know what everybody is saying about the death of those 1,400 Israelis and all the people who are carted off as hostages? This is what they say. They say, may their memory be blessed. Okay, well, the next verse after uh, the 5,784th verse in the Word of God, God says this, I will, write, I will wipe the memories of the enemy, Hamas, out of the memory of all of hum, uh, out of the memory of all of humanity, and it's like you know what? There's a blessing that is a memory, and there's a curse that is a memory. And God Almighty is at war; He is at war, and this is a day. You know, one of the things that's happening prophetically that I recognize is, you know, whenever Jesus comes back, all the Jews are in Israel, and what has happened since October the seventh is that it has become evident that the Jewish people are not safe anywhere on the planet Earth, not even here in the United States of America. And th what the conclusion they're all going to have to come to is the only place that we're going to be protected is in, is in the land itself, is actually in, actually in Israel. And we just saw, you know, something like more than a million Jewish people move out of Ukraine into Israel as soon as the, as soon as the Ukrainian war started. And now we're going to see another uh, great, Aliyat happened, and it's about to happen. And what we're seeing is prophecy being fulfilled before us in your face. It's taking place right now. Well, Miss Connie, I see that people are joining us all over the planet Earth. How awesome is that? It's so, so cool. So cool. I even saw that Honduras is here, and I think that's the first time I've gotten to see them join in. But I just wanted to talk, say a quick word on something you said um, about this whole not the whole ordeal with Israel, but how the Lord is speaking to you, how it's an encouragement to you. And that's what it's for. It's not for us to be afraid. It's for us to be hopeful. And I love when Pastor Troy talks about, hey, we as the people of God need to be a people of defiant hope. That's what this is for. The Lord is telling us these things that are coming, not so that we can be afraid or uh, cower in fear or let our hearts fail us because of the things that we see coming onto the earth, but so that we can hope in him. We can hope in King Jesus because we know how this is all going to end. And we know that we as the people of God are going to be preserved by the Lord. We believe that and that he is good. And we are going to see his goodness here in the land of the living. It's not something that we're going to have to wait and see on the other side of heaven. We're going to see it here. And so don't let these things, don't let these horrible things that have happened in Israel and that, you know, have the potential of happening all over the globe. Don't let those things cripple you in fear. No, hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because like Pastor Troy says, Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. He is our hope.
He is. And I will, I will remember every single day that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. Now, you and I and all of us here at Troy Brew Ministries and the team at ODX and Open Door Church and Answer International and Spark Worldwide and Open Door Food Banks and all the organizations that we're a part of and that we all started, we have been fighting darkness for a long, long, long time. And we yes. take on slavery all over the world. We take on sexual trafficking all over the planet earth. We say, no, we're going to take on hell with a water pistol. We know that in the book of John, it says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness is no competition. And the darkness comprehended it not. I preached on that last night at Open Door and I was doing an atomic Bible study through John chapter one. Didn't get very far. I think I only got to 10 verses. But that whole thing of darkness is no competition. Man, you got to know that. And the church has got to be really good at giving people hope today. And uh, we have to we have to be able to do that. I mean, we have to do that. Now, recently, uh, we did a, a redemption road trip, and I was down in South America, and then I was in Central America, and we rescued 34 girls in nine days, including this beautiful little 15-year-old girl. And I just got to show you, she's 15 years old, and she's about to have her baby, and we have her now, and whenever her baby is born, I'm going to be sharing that with all of our ODX family, and we're going to tell you what this baby's name is, but that's a little girl that was literally in the midst of slavery just a few months ago, and now she's set free, and now her baby is going to be born into freedom, and that's what we're doing, and you know what? Pornography hates us. I'm talking about hates us. Cartels of the world hates us. Pro Hamas people hate us. And you know what we say? Too bad. So sad. Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead and we ain't going to be afraid. And we're going to be the people of God and we're going to live in defiant joy and we will make a tremendous difference. How about them apples, Miss Connie? So amazing. You have to share the other rescues that we just got to. Okay, that's man. Super so, exciting. All right. So we did this too, guys. And, and again, if you don't have any good news, you need to plug into us because Jesus Christ is healing people. He's saving people. Uh, we we have salvations, you know, every day around here. I, God is doing amazing things. We There's not a single week that my phone does not blow up with some new person, now, some new child we've rescued. And we rescued them from the darkest things that you can possibly imagine. And we work with governments throughout the world. God Almighty's opened up all these doors. He allowed me to go speak to Congress. And I, I just, you know, I'm amazed because I'm a guy from Joshua, Texas. I live in Glen Rose now, but I'm, you know, indigenous to Joshua, Texas. I'm a nobody. But King Jesus is somebody. And his agenda is real. And he is, he's just doing it. Okay, so this Monday... We rescued a baby, and one of the things that we had the great privilege to do is rescue babies because babies are for sale throughout the world. Babies are trafficked throughout the world. We have a rescue center in Uganda, East Africa, that does nothing but rescue babies. And then they're on the border with the demonic agenda of our borders being opened and all the trafficking that has taken place, all the fentanyl that's coming across the border, all the terrorists that are coming across the border, all the mess that is happening, um, it's happening in borders everywhere. And the, again, do not be afraid. The Bible said that that would happen. The Bible says that by the time that Jesus comes back, there would be a global government. There would not be borders. There would be a one world money system. All those things that everybody's laughed at the Bible that said, oh, that could never happen. Well, it's happening. And the same Bible that says that that's going to happen also says Jesus will come back. <laughs> and he is coming back. And he's coming back for a powerful and a very victorious church. I'm telling you, he is. Well, we rescued a baby. And whenever we rescued a baby, this baby, and I don't want to go into the horrific, dark stuff that goes with our rescues of babies. Sometimes I can tell it and sometimes I can't. I can't really tell you this because it involves markets, it involves pornography, it, invo it involves all kinds of demonic and nefarious woke agendas. Um, and it's just, it's bad. Whenever we rescued this baby, what we found is the baby had five older siblings, the oldest being 13 years old, and then the girls and the other little boy being younger than that. And guys, I want to tell you, we got them, and we got all six of them. Guys, I want to show you that, that, that beautiful family right there, that family belongs to us now. And that is six of over 10,000 children we've been able to rescue. Six right there. And that little boy, that 13-year-old little boy is, 
you know, he's like a daddy to the other ones. And he's been in a helpless situation for a long time. And those kids have been in a helpless situation for a long time. But we got them now. And there's nothing that the devil can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Let the heathen rage. Let the wicked foam. Uh, let everyone that has an agenda to sexualize our children. I just hope the ground opens them up, opens up, and just swallows them. Let them go to hell. Let them go straight to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. I'm happy to preach Jesus to them, and I'm happy to send them on their way if they want to hurt our kids. You know, where are the people of God? Uh, where the men will actually still speak like men, and the women will actually still speak like women, and go, uh, no. We're saying no, and we're actually putting our money where our mouth is, and we're doing something about it. So we just rescued these guys. It's very important that we continue to build all of our infrastructure and continue to build our homes because kids are coming in. Um, several different governments are working with us now, uh, four different governments now, and as they are battling these pornography rings, these good guys that are actually in the governments are actually – like, you know what? We want to turn our kids over to you. And we're like, yeah, you can. Then they're like, Troy, you've been doing this for in, you know, in this place for over 28 years. And we see what you do and we see what your teams do. And they're amazing. Let us, let us turn them over. And so guys, we're actually doing that. And they're doing that with us. And it is amazing. And then I got hooked up with all these Holy Ghost secret squirrel guys when I was in D.C. And now I'm working with them. And many of those guys are in Israel and they are working with uh, they're working with um, the military and they're working with the Secret Service Mossad in Israel. Um, and they're being successful in actually locating hostages and getting them back. And those are people on our teams. We work with those guys now. Listen, we ain't playing. The body of Jesus is not just sitting around going, well, there's nothing we can do, but sing Kumbaya, we shall overcome. No, let's get up. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause, my friend? Hey, if you're not already a part of that, be a part of that. Help us. Help us. Call 877-413-0888 and give to this cause. And guys, I'm just telling you, man, we do it. This is what we do, and Jesus is alive and well, and God is speaking. Uh, go to odx.tv, check us out, watch our videos, uh, partner with us, be a part of this. Uh, join us on the prophetic life. Do, do the, is there not a cause? Hallelujah. All right. Okay, so yesterday, let me change gears here just a little bit, Miss Connie. Yesterday, we, well, we were saying at the beginning of this that uh, yesterday, our, our team started working actually in June to start getting together on our YouTube channel and like, let's do something awesome. And we we hit 100,000 views last night. And right, it literally is, I was watching everybody dance at, at you know, Ranger Stadium and then also to, what was that other place? I can't remember. Oh, I know what it was. It was Arizona. Uh, <laughs> I have so many friends that are from Arizona and I'm sorry you guys lost. I really am. But guys, be happy for us. We've been waiting for over 60 years to win. It's taken us over 60 years. Yeah. So look, <laughs> our count is continuing to go up. There's so many people that are joining. And uh, at the same time, we, you know, we were celebrating that, hey, man, we actually hit 100,000. And that's a big deal to us, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it then is. it hit it at a special time. We did. Do you remember what the special time was, Miss Connie? I do. I remember it was at 11.01 p.m. Yep. on 11.01. On the date, 11.01. Mm -hmm. We hit this at 11.01, and that's a 111. Now, if you've not seen all my teaching on 111 and how that the and how that the possessive word of the of the 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 possessive form of the word Jehovah is actually 111, and if you haven't been through all my 111 scripture teaching and what 111 actually means prophetically and how God likes to show up and show off at 111, even if it's like 888, which is a numerical value in Greek of the word Jesus or or 555, which is a numerical value of the word Christ, 555. And by the way, if you go to BibleGateway.com, you type up the word Christ, brrr, the word Christ is in the Bible 555 times. Everybody's worried about 666. All you got to know is 888 and 555, and you'll be okay. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. But you know what 888 is? It's 111 times 8. 
And by the way, 888 times two is 1776. And that was the year that our nation was born. We were born to be a witness of King Jesus. 1776 divided by two equals 888. Two means a faithful witness. Hallelujah. Oh, no. This is the stuff that we talk about, and it's going on around us everywhere. God Almighty is speaking. And if you have an eye to see and if you have an ear to hear, you know that this is the greatest day to live in the history of the planet Earth. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite one 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 scriptures is Deuteronomy one eleven, and it is the only scripture in the entire Bible that has a thousand fold blessing. Come on, somebody, yeah, yeah. Listen, man, we're not playing because God's not playing, and He's doing amazing things today. And I'm a little bit jazzed about all of it. Let's go, let's go. Allison Carson says that she got a five 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 on her odometer yesterday. Oh, you know what? You're one of those crazy people. Yeah, I'm one of those crazy people too. I can't even pump my gas without shouting to the Lord because I know what numbers mean and I know the scriptures that go with them. Oh, it's so much fun. I just, I totally love this. Again, if you like this kind of teaching, this is for you. And if this is for you, I want to encourage you and tell you, man, we do this all the time. Plug into our stuff and start talking this talk and be excited. I mean, come on, who would have, who would have thought that the 5,784th verse in the word of God would describe October the 7th to the T. I want to show it to you one more time, guys, because this is the most descriptive, prophetic, numeric scripture I've ever seen in my entire life. Guys, let me, let me show it to you. All right. It says, in the street, the sword will make them childless. We saw that happen. We saw what happened on the roads. We saw it. And then it says, in their homes, terror will reign. Are you kidding me? Okay, yesterday, yesterday, I got a testimony because we, we do a huge work in Israel. We have a monster soup kitchen. We have an incredible food bank. We have bomb shelters. We have churches. We have outreaches. We have an Ethiopian, for Ethiopian Jews, we have this big um, community center. And we've been doing this for years and years. And I got this testimony, a Messianic girl that was in the kibbutz called Beri, which everybody was massacred there. The Lord did, she gets on her WhatsApp and she contacts her community there and she says, okay, there's terrorists outside my house. And they're all getting on WhatsApp saying, hey, there's terrorists outside of our house too. And then they were all getting on saying, they're in, they're in our house. She told her little boy, hide underneath the bed. She hid underneath her bed in her bedroom, and then boom, they were in her house. She contacted her Jesus-loving community, her Messianic congregation, and said, pray for us, pray for us. There are terrorists in our home. Well, this doped-up knucklehead, this doped-up Islamic Hamas knucklehead, as he was busting the glass, he, he slit his wrist. And so you can see him on the camera, and I actually saw it on the phone. My Messianic brother showed this to me in my office yesterday. And you can see him inside the house, and he's trying to wrap up his wrist because uh, he broke it on the glass while he was in there to murder women and children. And then he goes towards the bedrooms, and she's like, goodbye, I love y'all. Please continue to pray for us. They're coming to our room. And then nothing happened. And they waited and waited and waited, and then nothing happened. And then, and they could hear the gunfire. They, she could read on WhatsApp what was happening to all of her neighbors and what was happening to all of her friends. And then several hours later, she hears in Hebrew as an IDF guy comes into her house and says, is there anybody here? And she said, yes, we're here. And he says, Shalom, you're okay. You're okay. Listen, we're good guys. We're not bad guys. Come out. And when she came out, she saw that there was this huge blood trail from that terrorist that went into her house to kill her and to murder her or to rape her or to behead her child. And this huge blood trail goes right to her bedroom door and just goes around in circles. And he never went in. And then it goes straight to her child's door and it just goes, the blood trail goes around in circles and he never went in. Then he went out. I can tell you this, friends, God Almighty, if, if he can make blind eyes see, he can make seeing eyes of terrorists blind. And I saw it yesterday for myself. We're putting together a video to show you this incredible testimony, and we'll include that on ODX here pretty quick. But guys, God Almighty saved her life, and she is a Jesus-loving Jew, and the church was praying for her. Pray, church. Christians all over the world, pray. 
Like, well, I don't know what our prayer directive is after that terrible scripture. I want to show it to you one more time. This is what it looks like. It is the 5,728th verse in the year 5728. 5728 began on Rosh Hashanah, which was September 6, uh, 16th on the Gregorian calendar. And this horrible event happened on October the 7th. And it says this. In the street, the sword will make them childless, and their homes terror will reign. The young men and the young women will perish. Where? At the Nova Dance Festival. Well, they were out there saying, hey, we're at peace with the Palestinians. We're at peace with them. And then they just came across the fence, and they murdered everybody. And then it says the infants and those with gray hair. How should we pray into this in such shocking, oh, it's so shocking, so horrible. How should we pray? Look at the next verse. This is what God Almighty declares. I will scatter them and I will erase their name from human memory. I, that's what I'm praying. And I want to just say this also to all of the Christians that are watching this, because we have thousands and thousands of people watching all over the world right now. We have countries all over the planet Earth. Let us know where it is you're watching from, by the way. And if you haven't liked this or shared this, if you have not subscribed, please do so. Please, please, please do so. Uh, let me say this. Support Israel and support the church in Israel. Support the Messianic congregations. The Messianics have been so persecuted, even by their own brothers and their own sisters there. And now they're the ones feeding people. They're the ones equipping people. They're the ones hugging people. They're the ones loving people. And they, God Almighty's doing a miracle with the Messianic body of Christ in Israel. So when you support that, be sure that you are supporting the church there. Be sure that you're doing that. If you don't know any of those organizations, call us because we've been there for years and years and years and we support over 30 churches there. And we're, I mean, we're talking about support, support. We're talking about a food bank that has fed over 100,000 meals, probably approaching 200,000 meals just since October the 7th. Yeah, we're not, we're not playing. We're talking about we converted two of our churches into bomb shelters and we converted them there. The Lord gave us the vision to start ramping up all of our bomb shelters several years ago. In the, in the city of Ashkelon, we have bomb shelters there. We have a community center there. And guess who all's in our community center right this second? IDF soldiers. Why are they there? Because they can't go to the front line. Why? Because they're not equipped. So what are we doing? We're loading them up with boots and with helmets. We're loading them up, them up with backpacks full of food. And we're loading them up with bulletproof vests. And so, man, you can be a part of a bunch of jokers that are playing around, or you can be a part of people who say, no, we're not playing, and that's us. That's the Open Door Church tribe. That is Troy Brew Ministries. That's who we are. That's what we do. And everybody that is already a part of this, guys, I'm just telling you, God bless you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for praying. Thank you for standing on the right side of biblical prophecy. Uh, thank you for being a drop dead, sold out Jesus freak. Thank you for caring and saying, I hate slavery. Don't just tell me that you would have stood against slavery 200 years ago here in the United States. If you want to stand against it now, let the body of Jesus rise up. Amen. Is there not a cause? Man, we're doing it. And it's crazy cool. All right, Miss Connie, I know that you're still there with me. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm just kind of going off. I'm excited. Yeah, no, it is awesome. It is so good and it's so needed. <laughs> well, I just got through doing a show with Larry Sparks and uh, he's, he's my publisher with Destiny Image. And they published my last book, uh, Redeeming Your Timeline. And uh, they're, gonna, they're going, they just also published a book that we're about to release on my birthday, December yes, the 6th. Woo -woo! So fun. Yeah. And it's prayers and declarations and it's battle, it's battle cries and mm -hmm. it's crazy cool. Oh, and the speaking, next year, sorry, what, what is speaking that? of battle cry, um, to stand with Israel, one of the things that we offer are uh, our battle cry cards. So if you need some prayer objectives for Israel, you don't know how to start off. This is one of the resources that we have that can help you uh, just direct you in how to pray for Israel, how so to stand good. with Israel. It's only five dollars. You can get it um, mailed to you or you can get the PDF. All you have to do is call 877-413-0888 or you can reach out online. They're also available on the Troy Brewer, Troy Brewer com store or you can go to ODX.TV and shop, go to the shop tab and it takes you directly there. 
So that's just another resource that we have because we really, when we say we stand with Israel, we, we really do. We do financially, we do prayerfully, and we are asking people to stand with Israel, especially through prayer. Uh, it's a really, really big deal to us. And we know that a lot of you have, and we're grateful. Mm, well, these are shining times. These are not days to be afraid. This is a day to be engaged. This is a day to be a part of it. You're neck deep in all this, Miss Connie. Your husband's neck deep into all of this. This is the life that we live. Leanna, of course, mm -hmm. my beautiful bride is neck deep into all this. All of us here at the Troy Brewer Ministries Tribe and ODX Tribe and all of us, man, we're, we're doing this stuff. And I just cannot tell you how important it is, guys, that you understand that this is not a day to be afraid. Yes, everything is changing. Yes, absolutely everything is changing. But this is not a day to be afraid. And we talk about that all day, don't we? Yes, we do. And I'm actually really, really excited. Um, in a couple of days, I'm going to be 30. And I just keep thinking about the fact that, you know, these are the days that our forefathers and those that came before us that they look forward to when the spirit of God is dwelling in the people of God. And we are getting to be the beacons of hope out in the world. We're getting to be the the people of promise. We're getting to be the hands and feet of King Jesus. And so, yes, as the world grows darker, which the Bible has always told us, it's never told us to be a friend to the world. It's always told us to be a friend to Jesus. As the world gets darker, it's just like Isaiah 60 says. Yes, the world gets darker, but what, your, your light is going to rise up like, and your darkness is going to be like noonday. We get to have a land of Goshen experience. We are not subjected to the kingdoms of this world, guys. We are subjected to the kingdom of God. So that's what we need to be holding on to. That's what we need to be going after. We need to be seeking the righteousness of God and his kingdom. Hold on to the hope of Jesus Christ. Like, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That's one of the things that, that the Lord is like, you know what? These people don't make it in my kingdom. They don't get with my agenda, the cowardly. That's not who we are. That's not who you are. You are, you are mighty conquerors, more than a conqueror in, the, in, in Jesus. So like, just hold on to that. I really feel like that's a strong word. Like, hey, this is not anything that we need to be afraid on, of. Sister. This is us getting to be the beacons of hope. This is us getting to rise up and be that people when people are like, well, why do you have such hope? What in the world could you possibly be hoping in? It's Jesus Christ in the reality of who he is. Uh, you know, people are commenting here saying, oh, Connie, you're such a baby. You're 29 yeah, years old. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and you're about to be 30. You are. Happy birthday to you, Lady Bird. Another you. best next week. I'm so proud of you. You're such a good girl. Listen, we're going to go into a time of questions and answers here. And I got a question here. So if you have a question and concerning... Our rescue of the six kids this week, we rescued them on the Tex-Mex border and rescued them from the, yeah, the straight up pornography. And guys, I, we had to fight this. If the body of Jesus does not stand up to this, there's nobody else coming. There's nobody else. This is it. And uh, we've rescued over 10,000 kids now. We're continuing to rescue them. You have questions about that or about the 5784 word. If you have questions about Israel, you know what? Here's your chance. So somebody asked a few minutes ago, like, do you have any update on the hostages? And we do. There was actually a woman that was freed by the IDF uh, two days ago. And I, I, cannot, I can't comment a whole lot about it except for to say we have boots on the ground that work with governments all over the world that are working with them. They do special, they have a proprietary kind of uh, technology and uh, governments use work, uh, governments of the world use them. We partner with them, we fund them uh, and they help us sometimes in rescues and they are there working with them and boom, uh, a girl was just rescued, was just rescued. And it is a miracle. And meanwhile, the world yawns. Oh, it should be the biggest world. It should be the biggest news anywhere, everywhere. And no, nope, everybody's got their agendas. Do not trust the news. I don't trust this. <laughs> Do not trust the news. Listen, you need to be full of the good news and you need to know the truth. And that's, and you have to, and you have to do that. Miss Connie, do you have any questions or you have any comments that you see there in the midst of all these? There's just thousands of people on here. Yeah, you know, the so comments keep coming and I haven't found any questions yet. So I'm like trying to scroll through and see if I can grab any really quick. Yeah. And you got a lot of work to do because yeah. there's so many people <laughs> commenting on so many different platforms. And I, oh, am, here we go. Yep. Uh oh. 
Laura Rennie. She says, how do we pray against personal persecution for standing boldly and praying for Israel? Yeah, well, Laura, first of all, let me just tell you this, honey, you will be persecuted. And I, I want to just tell you this, and I'm sorry for that. And I'm not belittling it. I mean, I get hate mail. We all get hate mail. People do hateful things. Again, uh, you you will you will be persecuted. There, you do have haters. You do have. And so you're like, okay, so how do we pray for that? Pray that there's a grace on you that in that moment that you know exactly how to handle it, that you know what to say, and that you know what to do. Uh, pray also too, and make sure that you have a strong network and you have a strong community that can help you through whatever terrible things that you're facing because of all these racist pigs and because of these hateful people that are full of demonic spirits. And uh, that's something else too. I want to just say this. I am not afraid to call racism uh, demonic. I hate it. And uh, I'm not afraid to call it what it is. The same as I'm not afraid to go out to pornography and say this, if you're watching pornography, you're watching a crime scene. And you are a part of the problem. And the church is full of it. The church, the church engages in it. Christians, Christians participate in it. Like, well, it's just part of my sexuality. No, it's a part of the slavery of somebody else's uh, um, sexuality. And if it wasn't for all that mess, uh, what's real is uh, the, all these markets wouldn't even exist. Now that I've said all that, you wouldn't believe the hate that we get for those kinds of things. And my kids and I do and my teams and the kind of things that happen. And here's a, so my prayer is that I know how to handle myself in, the, in that kind of situation. And my prayer is also for wisdom and discernment on what kind of in, what kind of hateful environments I should be in and which ones I should not be in. And uh, I just want you. Hey, listen, everybody pray for my sister. Father God, so I want to lift up Laura. And I pray, God, for whatever terrible persecution, God, that she's suffering right now, God, that you bless her and help her and love her. I declare Psalms 91, hedge of protection around her, and just declare that the goodness of the Lord is a wall of fire around her, and that King Jesus, that you are the glory in the midst of her. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Miss Connie, how was that? That was good. We got another question if you're ready to, to look at that one. Uh, J.A. in Christ said, if the years 5784 and there were 6,000 given before his return, doesn't that mean we still have 200 plus years to wait for his return if this is that year? That is a great that is a great question. Uh, make no mistake about it. This this calendar is off. OK, like, wait, why would God use it if it's off? Because it's our cubit. It's our measure. Uh, actually, after church last night, I spoke to a lady that I'm going to be speaking to today who was like, OK, look. In the, in the, uh, what is the other calendar? In, in another calendar, there's only 50 years left. In, there, in another calendar this, another calendar that. There's multiple calendars, okay? But this is a standard that, that the Jewish world use, and the Lord will respect our standards, even if they're wrong. It's like, you can buy a two by four today. It's not actually two by four inches, <laughs> but it is the standard and we call it a two before. And so this is a problem that a lot of people have had with this and like, well, Troy, I'm not even sure that the year begins on uh, Rosh Hashanah. I think it begins on Passover and I'm not sure that that calendar is right. Oh no, it's not. It's not right. Like what? Like, okay, well then it's illegit. No, no, there's lots of things that's not right about me, but God Almighty anoints me and his spirit is upon me. And, and so it is with the calendar. I would say this, do not be afraid, my sweet friend. Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back. And you're not going to have to wait for a long, long time. You will see, whenever you see all these things coming, the Bible says, look up because your redemption is drawing nigh. And yeah, so that's a legit question. I would also say this, go to my sermon that was on calendars and go and look that up. And also too, if you, if you do that at ODX, all of my sermon notes are on there for free. And that's another thing that we offer because we're, we're really trying to get the word of God into people's life. We really are. So go there and do that. Hey, pastor. So yes, in, in response to this about the calendars, uh, Marilyn asked, hey, have you heard of the, I don't know how to pronounce that, Karyades, Karyades, Jew, who are Torah only? And the um, other comment that she posted is that their calendar says that we are in the year 5, 59.99. So it's just correct. about a year. That is correct. Yeah, I'm a little bit aware of those cats 
And, um, you know, they're not a part of the mainstream uh, Jewish culture that gave us the calendar that we have now, but they may very well be right. And this is not from 5,999 years from Adam. It's from the fall of Adam. And that if you've ever if you guys ever listen to me preach and teach on how calendars work, it's like, OK, well, you know, there's 1,948 years from the fall of Adam to Abraham, which, by the way, there's 1,948 years from Jesus to the rise of Israel, 1948. Come on. Boom. This is 75 years into it. What happened 75 years into Abraham's life? God Almighty called him out of Ur and called him to the land. That's happening right now all over the world. As this year, Jews begin to realize the United States will not protect us here. Uh, we thought we were protected because we're American citizens. Oh, no. It's become part of the culture now that it's okay to hate Jews. Like, Pastor, you're just saying that because you're Jewish. There ain't a Jewish, there ain't a, a Jewish bone in me. I'm as Gentile as you can possibly be. I'm sixth generation Texan and I'm a 16th generation American. And the only Jew I've got in me is Jesus. Hallelujah. So, no, I'm not saying that because I'm Jewish. I, I would, I would still be right, even if I was Jewish. I would still be right. Um, but I'm saying this because I stand with King Jesus and I stand with freedom and I love people. And so uh, you're going to see the call from the nations into the land in this 75th year, according to our cubit or our standard. And remember, a cubit is the biblical standard, and it's a little bit different for every single person because we don't know if it's 18 inches or 21 inches. A royal cubit is 21 inches. But if it's this or that, everybody's a little bit different and things are a little bit off because of our humanity. Well, the Lord, the Lord pre-programmed all of that into calendars as well. So it's basically uh, 2,000 years from the fall of Adam unto uh, Abraham, 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus, 2,000 years from Jesus until now. And we're about to enter it into the seventh day, which is the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling y'all, Jesus is coming back soon. All right, follow, following, um, following that, Red Cat had a really good question. As a watcher for the rapture, it is hard to stay motivated to invest and build business ventures because it seems that the rapture is very near. Should we still be investing long term? How do we focus? Absolutely. I mean, what are you going to do with that money anyway? <laughs> what are you going to do with it? No, no, no. Listen, no, no, no. Listen, you, you need to live life like Jesus is coming back any day and he might not come back for another 2000 years. And you need to occupy. So your command from the Lord is to occupy, which means to rule and to reign and to advance the kingdom wherever you're at. You need to prosper. You need to make a contribution. You know, one of the things, because I'm a rapture guy and a lot of everybody's like, oh, that's so stupid. You guys are lazy. You don't do anything. Oh, really? I got one food bank that feeds 100,000 people a month. I got food banks all over the planet Earth. We've rescued 10,000 kids. I have a church here, and I have another one in Houston, Texas. I have a television show. I've got 14 books. We've rescued over 10,000 children. I, I have, I'm on the radio on 71, uh, on 71 radio stations. We are doing everything we can do to reach people for Jesus. And uh, I want to just tell you, man, stay motivated. And, and, and don't be like, well, I just think he's going to come back tomorrow, so there's no point. Oh, no, no. There is a point up until the second he comes back and then all of our motivations are going to change. Everything will change in that moment, but it should not change until that moment. Um, you know, I, I joke a lot about, you know, uh, Leanna and I got married 35 years ago and I was scared to death that Jesus was going to come back before my wedding night. You know, Christian men worry about those kinds of things like, no, Jesus, stay back. Please stay back. What's really is in the moment that and in the twinkling of an eye that you go to meet the Lord, every priority that you have will change. It will change. Until that time, until that time, man, you need to have great vision, incredible vision, and you need to be making a tremendous difference. I want to, hey, Red Cat, the body of Jesus needs you to be successful. Hey, man, your family needs you to be somebody who is in a really good place, and the Lord has raised you up for such a time as this. I encourage you, my friend. Um, so there are several people that are asking, hey, how can we get involved with what you're doing in Israel? How can we help? How can we help to be the hands and feet there on the front lines? And thank you so much for asking that, because, you know, just since uh, just since uh, October 7th, 
um, people have partnered with us and we have been able to literally send more than $150,000 that was given us to us to give to Israel. If you say, give this to Israel, it will go to Israel. We have an Israel account and it goes to Israel. And that's what it is that we do. Um, we are buying bulletproof vests and they're about $450 a piece. They're about $400 a piece. And then it costs about $50 to get them to Israel. And so with the logistics and all that, it rounds out to about 50 bucks a piece. Um, our food bank needs to be supported in a tremendous way. And um, our soup kitchen, which we call it a soup kitchen, but it's just a 24-hour place to eat. And we rescue drug addicts and prostitutes and all those kinds of stuff. Our churches need tremendous support. So one of the things that uh, people don't know is that since October the 7th, um, every single person that worked on a job site there are no job sites in Israel going on right now. We're talking about construction sites. Like why? Because Palestinians worked on all those places and now they can't get across the border. So they shut down everything. And the Israeli government shut down all building in Israel. It's over. It's done. And now there's a big thing going on in their Knesset over there. Like, no, these people need to work. So those people have been out of, out of work now for a month. And we have to support those people. We got to help those people. We got to help the body of Jesus. We got to help the pastor assist over there. Uh, we work with the television station that is over there. My good friend Ron Cantor runs that. And they actually preach the gospel in Hebrew there. Those works need to be supported. Um, all of our community centers for our Jewish friends, specifically our Ethiopian friends, those are all old people and they have to be fed and they have to be taken care of. You can simply go to odx.tv and go to the and go to the tab on giving. There's one that says for Israel there, or you can call us at 877-413-0888. And guys, I'm telling you right now, we're doing the stuff and uh, we're happy to do it. And we've been doing it for a long, long time. And I want to tell you that um, it's amazing how the body of Jesus is stepping up. So if you haven't done that yet, Please do so. And also, too, we are relocating tons of families that were down there by the Gaza Strip, that they were living in freedom down there by the Gaza Strip, and they can't live there now because of the war and the terror that's taking place over there. So what do you do with all these families? And you love them. You take them in. You find places for them to live. You feed them. You take care of their babies. You take care of their kids. And you let them know that it was people who believe that Jesus Christ is their Messiah is doing that. And Yeshua HaMashiach, Shalom, in the name of King Jesus. And that's what we're doing. And I would just say, you know what? You can just give directly to Troy Brew Ministries, or you can go to odx.tv, and you can give through there, or you can call us, or you can give online, or you can do all the stuff. And so thank you very much. The next one is a bit uh, here over on our side of the world. Uh, Sherry Hopkins asks, do you know anything that's going on behind the scene to rescue the 90,000 illegal immigrant children that they don't know, you know, what happened to them or who got a hold of I them? Can, I can just, yes, I do. And I can tell you what, I can tell you what's being done about it. Are you ready? Nothing. However bad that you think it is, it's actually worse than that. And I'm sorry to say that. And I've been, I've been screaming that from the border since Biden uh, went into office and every single person that all of us, all of our different organizations worked with in the government stopped working with us on that day and said, okay, we're not interested in doing this anymore. Uh, we're not interested in saving kids. We're not interested in rescuing kids. We're not interested in fighting this nefarious agenda. We're not in interested in any of this. And they didn't, and they don't, and they don't work with any of us anymore. Um, and they did. I'm talking about all over the world. We worked with FBI and we worked with CIA all over the planet Earth. And then they all turned their attention to something else as they were directed to do so. And so like, okay, what, what about these 90,000 children that came across here that came into the hands of the United States government? And then we turned them over to people that we don't know. And now they're all gone. Yeah, that's going on. You bet it is. Let the body of Jesus pray and let the body of Jesus get actually involved in this and if you're not, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, there's nobody else going to stand. Uh, is Hollywood going to track down these kids? Are all these knuckleheads on all these college campuses, are they going to go, hey, we're going to do something about this? Oh, no. Is the pornography industry going to do anything about it? No, no, no. They're actually part of the problem. Um, is, is Washington, D.C. going to? No, they're not going to. They were happy to turn them. They were happy to let 
monsters bringing them across. They were happy to turn them over to monsters. And now they're saying, well, we just don't have the manpower. You know, we're just human beings and there's nothing we can do. Although that did not happen when our last president was in office. It did not happen. And uh, now it does happen. And so it's like, mm. and, you know, I mean, I, I have friends that actually work for the government that have literally found kids that we have found kids that was in the care of the government at one time and they were let go. Uh, one child um, had had surgeries on him and had had certain parts of his body removed. I'm not even going to go off into it. And those people were supposed to, those children are supposed to be in the care of our government and they're not. So yeah, I can just tell you, I'm sure that there's some good guys somewhere that's working on that, but I don't know of a single person. Well, thank you, Pastor Troy. I think that was a good, and it was a real, it was a real it's answer. It's just real. Yeah. It's just real, guys. This is going on. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Stand up. Be a part of the solution. Can't be a part of the problem in any way whatsoever, whether it's pornography or whether it's walking away and not being a part of this. We all have to fight this. This is the job and the duty of the body of King Jesus. And uh, these are kids. These are children. And we have to do something about it. Yes. Um, this is a bit weird, but I do think you should address it, Pastor. Um, Bianca is asking, will God punish the children that were forced into pornography? No. Yeah, uh, Bianca, I'm not real sure, you know, what what lens you're coming from on that, but you but these children and even even the women that are in pornography, they they're victims. And even though the women, the older women are willing participants, they have been conditioned to be willing participants. There's not a single child in the world that wants to grow up to be a porn star. There's not a single child in the world that wants to grow up to be a sex slave. No, these, no, you need to know that with slavery, with every form of slavery that's ever happened, whether it was with the Egyptians or the Babylonians or the Medes or the Persians or the Greeks or the Romans or any of these world empires here in the United States, uh, with the slave trade is the sexual slave trade. So there's only three reasons why anybody is a slave. There's only three reasons. And one is they're a slave for manual labor. Two is they are a slave for their organs. Or three, they're a sexual trafficking slaves. And that's it. There's no other reason to enslave anybody. And so, man, the Lord understands this. And Jesus has come to set the, to set the slaves free. And he's still doing it to this day. And he has a few willing participants. But no, ma'am, he will not. No, ma'am, he will not. You know, I we uh, when when I spoke in Washington D.C., there was a girl that that spoke before I did, and she had been trafficked since uh, since she was a child from Mexico. She was the only survivor of a group of forty different girls, the only survivor, and she spoke at the International Summit Against Human Trafficking. And when she got up and spoke, she said, "You know what?" When I was a teenager, I was a slave, and they would send me here to Washington D.C. And you should have seen people trying to crawl under their desk. When she said, do you know where I got sent more than any other place? I got sent right here to Washington, D.C. And I was like, you go, girl. You go. Let's go. And she said, there were lots of people who saw me and they judged me because I was a prostitute. And they never considered that I needed to be rescued. I promise you, Jesus considers that they need to be rescued. I want to show you this little girl that we just rescued. And we rescued her on the redemption road trip. That's a 15-year-old child who has a baby in her. And we rescued her, and she was actually number 33 of the girls that we rescued, but we count her and her baby as 33 and 34. <laughs> so, you know what? I promise you, she. one of the things that I speak into the lives of our rescued girls is this. You're, you're a good girl. I see you, and I know you, and you're a good girl. And that's the voice of the Father towards them, and it sets them free. And so, no, 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 you're not bad. You're not bad. You are good. And I see you. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to start crying right now. See what you did? Quit it. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm having an estrogen fit. Just stop it. Hallelujah. Okay, what else? You have another question? Yes, sir. And I think I think we want to finish up with this last question because it's already one. And I know you have some recording. Um, but Steve asked a really good one. He said, after the rescue and after committing to feeding and clothing these precious ones, 
How do we agree and stand with you in prayer for those traumatized to be free from a repeating cycle, um, from uh, delivered from any inroad, oh, and to be delivered from any inroads gained by the enemy of their soul? Yeah, thank you, Steve. Sure do love you, brother. Call you blessed. I bless your house today. Hey, pray for accelerated uh, timelines in their healing because the quicker that they get healed and they're all, their souls are fragmented. They have fragments of souls. That's a demonic agenda. They know how to do that. Uh, the whole global realm that ritualizes these children, they know how to fragment their souls for different reasons of uh, spiritual and natural slavery. They know how to do that. And, um, and also too, to keep them from connecting the dots so that they can find freedom. Uh, pray that they would be repaired in every single way that uh, a child can be repaired. And, uh, you know, whenever we rescue these kids, when, uh, whenever we actually do that, um, we have to, uh, their bodies always need to be healed. They need to be healed of diseases and their bodies need to be repaired. And then they need to be able to grow in such a way to where their souls are completely repaired and that their identity is repaired and that they know who they are. And so, yeah, hallelujah. That's a great question. I like that. Well, this is a great hey. question and answer time. Let's just keep on going. We're doing great. Yes, sir. It was. Okay. Um, I before, see that there's a giver on here, by the way. Yes, I want What is that? How does yes. that work? Um, they're giving through YouTube. And um, I actually, before we went to questions, I wanted to say thank you to the people who have given um, wow. through YouTube, just because we you, see Greg. it right here now. So thank you, Greg. And thank you, Lady Patriot. And thank you, uh, Manu. Wow. Awesome. We are grateful. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Man, the Lord bless you. Father God, I just want to lift up people who are willing to do that. And I pray, Father God, sir, that you bless them and help them and encourage them, fight their battles, meet their needs, answer their prayers. Father, bless them, bless them, bless them. And God, let that money be ministry and let it be life. Let it be the rescue of so many more kids. Let it be food. Let it be shelter. Let it be the heart of the Father towards him in Jesus' name. That's exciting. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Um, I thought that this was interesting because you were just in Georgia, in Valdosta. Uh, Heather H. asked if you were going back anytime soon. Well, I don't know if they'll have me back. You know, I was, I was pretty rowdy while I was out there. Um, but yes, I, I don't have anything, any plans. I'm going to be in Seattle. I'm going to be with Marilyn Hickey, uh, not this week, but next week. Uh, I'm, going to be, I'm going to be with Brother Rod Parsley. He's going to be with me this weekend, and then he's going to be out at Redemption Ranch. And uh, that's going to be great. You guys need to come out to Open Door this coming weekend or watch us on ODX. And then I'm going to be with Marilyn Hickey. And then I'm going to be with, in Seattle, Washington at the Seattle Revival Center. And we're doing a star party and talking about how the heavens declare the glory of God, talking about huge prophetic things. And then I'm going to be at another international summit against human trafficking. And that's going to be in Mexico City and also Cancun. And I'm going to be there. And the president's staff of Mexico is going to be there. Several governors are going to be there with us. Um, a whole bunch. And we're, we are coming against it. And we're telling them, guys, we're not playing. We're not playing. And we're not afraid. And we're going to be doing that. And then uh, where am I going to be after that? Uh, I'm going to be somewhere else. And that gives me like the next four or five weeks. Those are the places I'm going to be. So, guys, you can keep up with us uh, by, you know, following us on all of our social media. And so thank you so much for that. And then uh, the next question is from Anita Hadassah. I know that we have a bunch of ministries in India. So yes. I, she asked from India, I want to ask if God has a word for India. Oh, Sister Anita, I love you so much. Uh, I've been to India more than 40 times, and I love me some India. Uh, I have a daughter, um, one of my rescued daughters. I have many, many, many rescued daughters in India. We've, we've, been, we've been in Uganda longer than anywhere and then India right after that. And uh, we've rescued so many people. So what's on the radar for India right now? Well, radar, you know, my, my prophetic word for this year is literally altered state. And as you know, everything is changing. And I know the persecution that, that you face there. 
and I'm so sorry. And you need to know that your brothers and sisters in the American church stand with you and we love you. Um, the network of Christians in India is building in a much, much, much stronger and greater way. And a lot of the tribal things that had divided so many of you, uh, the Lord is just erasing those things because you're having to stand together. And I see a great move of God in India. Um, um, you know, man, um, it used to be that God would send missionaries from America to India. Now it is that God is literally sending missionaries from India to America. <laughs> and that's how strong so, so many of the body of Jesus is there. I would just say, stand strong. We love you and we support you. We praise God for you. We do a tremendous work in Orissa. I've been in Orissa a whole bunch of times. We built churches there. We built orphanages and rescue centers. We've done a bunch of underground stuff there uh, in saving girls all over there. Um, and we, we know you and we love you and we call you blessed. But uh, before the next question, Pastor, I want to uh, say thank you to Ryan for signing on board to be a new YouTube member. Why? That is awesome. That's awesome. Woot, woot. And thank you go. for Helena for giving. Way to we go. Are grateful. Helena, thank, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for that. Man, the Lord bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the next one is from Danielle. She says, What happens to Jews when the rapture happens? Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so so the big argument in the church is is over is the eschatology the same, and I just don't. I don't think it is. I don't think that the eschatology of the church is the same for the eschatology for Israel. And so, Jewish people that believe in King Jesus and Jewish people that are looking for the return of King Jesus all fall within the bride of Christ. But the covenant that God made with Abraham for Israel is a very real covenant. And I can tell you what happens at the very end of the tribulation period. Jesus Christ comes back for Israel with the church, with, with, with his bride. And then Joseph will be revealed to his brethren. And it's just like the picture of Joseph, man. Whenever Joseph took off his Egyptian wig, he wiped off his Egyptian makeup. He quit, he quit, he turned off the Bengals tune and he quit walking like an Egyptian and he started speaking in Hebrew and he said, it's me, it's always been me and you're not in trouble. I'm here to bless you and I'm here to love you. But Jesus will not come back until Israel cries out and says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There has to be a revival in Israel first. It's gonna take place, you're gonna see. Yay. So good. So good. Um, I saw a really good one from her name is Paulette. She says, hey, how do are we supposed to react to people who believe that Christians who support Israel are wicked? Um, I want to just tell you, man, uh, Brother Forrest Gump says stupid is as stupid does. And I would not react. I would not care. Why? Why would you be worried about the enemies of God? <laughs> so it's like Paulette you probably live in a place where where that is like a real deal and like we hate Christians because they stand with Israel well I I want to just tell you you know I I bless you my friend Paulette and I love you and I bless you and I'm sorry for the persecution that that you face over that but you need to know this the enemies of God are also the enemies of the body of Jesus and they're also the enemies of Israel and we have haters and uh, there's a reason why we have to have security forces all over the team, uh, um, all over the world. And there's a reason why we have to have that kind of stuff, because we have very real haters. And um, I would just say your reaction is to stand with truth and to speak the word of God wherever you can and to declare the truth and, and to know what the truth is. And to, be, and to continue to be a lover of truth and be a fearless demonstration of freedom, redemption, and the goodness of God in every way that you can. But do not back off from your support from Israel. Um, God Almighty blesses those who bless Israel and do all that you can to continue to do that. Guys, let's all pray for Paulette. Can we do that? Father God, I want to lift up my sweet sister and I lift up Paulette and I pray, Father God, sir, that you protect her and bless her. And God, give her language. I pray, Father God, sir, that you give her language, give her a mind and a grace for a mind on how to deal with the hatred of the people um, who think that she's wicked. Father God, sir, who call good evil and who call evil good. Give her a mind and a grace for that, Lord. And I love you, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Paulette. Thank you for your question, Paulette. Um, 
Well, you were mentioning um, Rod Parsley being out at Redemption Ranch <laughs> and Mustard Seeds is asking, hey, where is Redemption Ranch? Well, Redemption Ranch is a sacred place. It's a sacred space of several hundred acres, 720 acres out in West Texas. It's a place where we rescue our rescuers. And uh, um, it is out in the middle of nowhere. It's very hard for me to tell you where it's at um, because it is... It's 30 miles from Haskell, it's 30 miles from Throckmorton, and it's 30 miles from Seymour, out in the middle of all that. It's about an hour and a half north of Abilene, Texas, and there's that spot. And uh, we also have another redemption ranch, which is a rescue center, and where we rescue kids and we house kids. We just rescued our first 25 kids, and it's on the Mexican-Guatemalan border, and... Um, yeah, man, we just we just opened it. We just bought it and we just opened it. A lot of people stood with us and said, hey, we want to open that. And so, man, we did it. And we raised the money and we did it. Now we can hold as many as 150 kids there. And we need to rescue those 150 kids. We know where they're at. I just got to finish out building all the buildings and we need the support and we need to finish that project and then get 150 kids in there. Then they will live there. And then we'll get them healed up. We'll get their little bodies healed up. We'll get their souls healed up, and then we will move them into families. And so then we can move in. We can have 150 kids at a time at that redemption ranch that is in Guatemala. It's actually in Mexico. It's in, it's in Chiapas, Mexico, on the Guatemalan border. Yes, that was perfect because um, that was perfect because Sherry Hopkins was just asking, how is it going building the new redemption ranch in southern Mexico? Hey, Sherry, I want to tell you how good it is. Um it's, it's going good. <laughs> it's going good. We still have a lot of work to do, and it's hard to get things built there, uh, but it's going very good. And our kids are safe, and including Nimshi, the first, the first girl that we rescued, which is like an uh, older girl for us because she's 18, and we hardly ever rescued. Honestly, in all the circles we live, these kids are already dead by the time that they're 18, or they're gone forever. <laughs> And we were able to rescue an 18 year old, as you very well know. And then we rescued her and then we got her in our place. And then we're like, we don't even know your name. We knew her terrible name and I'm not ever gonna tell you what that is. But she had a name of what, of what she was known for because she'd been so sold. And um, she's a beautiful young lady that just needs a daddy who will love her and a family who will take care of her. It should not be a crime to be a girl and to be poor. It should not be a crime. And the body of Jesus has to stand with these people. And so we did. And whenever we got her, we set her down. We were talking to her. And then she says this. We said, we, look, we don't even know what your name is. And she says, my name is Nimshi. And we're like, well, Nimshi's not a Mexican name. Isn't that Hebrew? And she said, yeah, my mama was a Christian before she died when I was 11. And I was sold off into slavery. And we're like, what does Nimshi mean? And Nimshi means rescued. The first girl that we rescued, there she is, at Redemption Ranch on the Guatemalan border, the very first one. Her name is Hebrew, and it means rescued. Guys, if y'all haven't seen the video of all that, go and look up all of my Redemption road trip videos, and you can see them at odx.tv. It's free. Just go there and check it out and look at it. And it's crazy. It's redonkulous. <laughs> So it's going very good and uh, we're making huge progress and people that are healthy and they're fine and it's going great. All right, I see another good one from Terry Boy Boylan. She says, I'm a member and also in the ministry. Excellent. Do you ever need workers in help ministry? Oh, thank you so much. Number one, thank you for being a member. Thank you for being a partner. Thank you. And thank you for your service to King Jesus and whatever part of the world that you're at and doing what you're doing. Um, the reality is uh, we do take people with us and we do take people with us on special trips. Everybody wants to, you know, arm up and go with us and kick down doors. And obviously not that. No, no, no. That's very special people that do that. And I don't even do that. I'm not the guy that does that. Um, so I've, I've rescued people on, you know, my own, but not like that. And so, um, so a lot of people are like, Hey, we want to go there. We want to help. We want to do this. And there are certain mission trips that you can go on where you could go and you could help. Uh, but it wouldn't be the help of rescuing kids. It would be the help of helping the kids we've already rescued. And it would be that. And, uh, yeah, there, there are times that we need people to come go with us. We sure do. 
All right, before we go to the next question, Pastor, I want to thank Lisbeth for, for giving to you through YouTube. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. It's so, so, so cool. That's great. And then uh, Marilyn asked, um, have some of the kids who have been rescued as, a, as adults tried to find their family? Yeah, that is an awesome question. And yeah, sometimes yes. Um, mostly no. Now, the the adults, when I would say adults, I'm talking about you know, near 20 year old, something like that. If, if they're, if they're older, like we've rescued, like our Otis women that we've rescued have been women in their forties and even fifties. And that's been in India and that's been in Nepal. And it's because their husbands had got into debt and then the cartel came and got them. And, uh, they had not been slaves for very long by the time that we got them, maybe a year or two years or three years, something horrible like that. But we got them. They knew where their families were. They knew how to go back. But uh, we also had a deal where, where we rescued, we actually rescued 18 boys at one time, uh, from a, a Buddhist monastery in, uh, Nepal. And the miracle with that was they had all been, they had all been abducted as children and we found the families of all 18 of those boys, all 18. And that was a tremendous miracle. Like that was crazy. Um, but like the, the kids, you know, they, they don't know. I mean, these people don't even have addresses, you know, they don't even have like, Hey, what's, what's your, what's your mama's name? Well, her name's mama. Okay. Well, what's your daddy's name? Uh, his name's daddy. Okay. Well, where do you live? Well, they, they don't know. And so um, it's kind of like that. But yeah, sometimes, sometimes the older kids and sometimes, and, and many times the older kids can't go back to their family because there was a family that sold them into slavery to begin with. And so it's a, it's a complicated kind of mess. But the answer to your question is yes. Sometimes the older ones, they go back and they reunite with their families. Yes. All right, Pastor, we have very few left. I don't know if you want to wrap up or if you want to try and push through a couple more. Yeah, I want to I want to look at Sandy Hurley there. Right here. Yep. Yes. Um, can a person volunteer at Redemption Ranch on a temporary basis? I'm a mom and wife full time that would love to help when I can. That's amazing, Sandy. Yeah. You know what? We're going to be putting some special things in the year 2024 where we're having special events. And let me tell you, the Redemption Ranch that we have in Chiapas, Mexico, you could. You could you could come there. You would have to. We'd have to vet you and all that kind of stuff. But it's very possible we could send you down there. And you could work with our kids and you'd see for yourself who our kids are and what we do in the ministry that we're involved in. Um, there's also some opportunities on the Tex-Mex border at some of our rescue centers that you could go there and you could spend a couple of days maybe. And we've had teams of people that have gone down and done that. At Redemption Ranch in West Texas, we rescue our rescuers. So we bring in all of our rescuers there and uh, we pour into their lives. We treat them like kings. Uh, we have them bring their families and their kids and we have a blast with them and we pour into them and we build them up. And a lot of our pastors that we work with all over the world that are rescuers and they take care of our rescuers, we bring them in because they're just so beat up. They're just so beat up. But we have cabins out there and it's a cool place. And um, it's a big old hunting ranch out there and a fishing place and that kind of a thing. And uh, it's, it's nice. And, you know, I mean, it's not like opulent or anything, but I mean, it's, it's a nice place to stay. It's, it's wonderful for me. I, I have my own little cabin out there and it's 600 square feet of my happy place and I love it. And so, yeah, there, there will be some opportunities. So stay tuned to that. Um, the only other one that I see is from a fire bright. Fi yes. Oh, fire bright. I gotcha. Is there a word for Dominica between Guadalupe and Martinique? Um, I don't know. Martinique. I love your name, by the way. I'm just going to call you Faya. Yeah, that's cool. Right on. I'm just going to call you. Yeah, I know. I know Dominica very well, and I know Guadalupe, and I know Martinique. I've been to all those places, and uh, I love the church there. I love the body of Jesus. I love how you guys worship, and you're such beautiful people. It's such such a beautiful part of the planet Earth, man. Uh, do I have a word specifically for Dominica? No, I I really don't, except for to say I know you and I stand with you. 
And also, too, to say this as well, I, I don't know that you guys in that part of the world have known how important you are to the body of Jesus. Because you guys have been like, oh, man, you're off on those tiny islands and, you know, it's really no big deal. No, it's a big deal because the church worldwide is in a mess. And the way that you guys worship and how faithful you are and the way that you love each other is desperately needed within the body of King Jesus. And I celebrate you and I love you. <laughs> it's awesome. Hey, Sherry wants to know if you're going to finally let Miss Leanna Come have on, her Sherry zebra. Sherry Hopkins, you, <laughs> that is not, no, I've not found her a zebra yet. Leanna wants a zebra. I don't, she doesn't need a zebra. She needs, she's like, we have a ranch on Glen Rose. She's like, please let me have a zebra. They're mean and they're crazy. And no, I have not been able, we actually look for one for a while. But she wants to raise it like a baby, like she does all of our animals out there. You know, our donkeys and our horses and our cows and our goats and our ducks They all and our chickens. They all think that they're human beings. All of them do. And Leanna names them. No, I have not found a zebra yet. I haven't. Okay. Well, I think we're about done. And, and to go back to the very beginning of this, if you're a late bloomer for all this, we celebrated our 100,000th YouTube subscriber last night. We celebrated that. Oh, we, man, wow. Man, that number's going up. That's great. And we just started getting serious about that just a couple of months ago. So we're so happy about that. Thank you so much for that. And by the way, that happened at 11.01 on 11.01 01 last night. And we know what 111 means. And we're Deuteronomy 11.1 guys. And we're freaks about all that kind of stuff. And we, I taught on all that. So you guys go back and look at that. We also made a really big deal, a really big deal out of the Texas Rangers winning uh, last night. Why? Because they were the only baseball team, the only one out of all the major league baseball teams that did not bow their knee to the woke agenda of having a gay pride family night. And they stood their ground and said no. And then they won the World Series. And uh, you go. I was so proud of them. Also, um, we also made a big deal out of the 5,784th verse out of the Word of God because it is Deuteronomy 31, verse 25. And in the year 5784, we saw the October 7 event happen. And this is what it says. In the street, the sword will make them childless, and their homes terror will reign. The young men and young women will perish, the infants and those with gray hair. But while that was prophetically in your Bible, and I preached that at the Rosh Hashanah event, I preached it, didn't know what it meant, had no idea that October 7th was going to happen. I just said it speaks of war in Israel. It speaks of war in Israel. And boy, did it ever. My goodness. Um, the next verse tells us what God's plan for Hamas is. Let me show you the next verse. He's going to scatter and erase their name from human memory. Let it be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I think I'm about done here, and there's so many people, and we've literally had thousands of people join us for this impromptu Thursday event across all of yeah. our platforms. Really cool. You did a great job, Miss Connie. You did oh, an well, outstanding thank job. You. So did you, especially with teaching and the questions and answers, but you always do such a good job. I love question and answers. Yeah, it's really I would just do good. question and answers all day if I yeah. could. That's one of our favorite times with the Prophetic Life group is because they post such good questions and they such do. good comments, and it always leads us down a really cool rabbit hole. So that's really fun. We, You know what, Ladybug? We also made a really big deal. We made a big deal out of the little girl that we rescued that's yeah. about to have her baby. And we love her so much. She's a 15-year-old little girl. And now, you know what? She's going to have a nice house, and she's going to live with family. And we're going to teach her how to be a mama in the midst of her continuing her childhood. And, and we, we will. Also, you know, we, we, we also, and you know this too, Miss Connie, we rescued a 12-year-old little girl that has mm -hmm. a one-year-old child. Yes. And uh, we rescued we another uh, 12 or 13-year-old uh, that also is pregnant. We did all that here within the past couple of months. Man, we rescued these kids. They got to be rescued. The body of Jesus has to stand up for that. And yeah. we do. Over 10,000 kids going strong. Mm -hmm. We're doing it. People are supporting it. We're, we're funding it. Thank you guys for helping us do that. Yes. Uh, we also made a really big deal out of, uh, what else did we make a big deal out of? Out of the six rescues that we, yes, we recently got. Yes, we made a big got. deal out of that. We rescued those, those guys on Monday. Today's Thursday. And we rescued that entire family 
out of the horrors of slavery. And we have them now and we love them. And actually the home that we put them in actually adopts out. So there's a good chance that we might be able to get them into another family. Uh, but we have Mexican families that actually come and adopt our kids from that place. And it's just amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And so that's a really big deal. Like guys, it's, it's, these are shining times, man. It's yeah. a good day to be alive. So do not be afraid, my friends, and uh, keep looking up. All right, I'm going to turn this over to you, Miss Connie. Tell everybody all the stuff. And until the next time I see y'all, I'll call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favor of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh my gosh. Yes. It was so, so good. Um, I want to thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who gave and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who are going to give through different avenues. And thank you for those of uh, you who posted in the comments, you were conversational, you were relational with each other and you posted questions. It was great. That gave us like even more time to get to hang out. And you see that Pastor Troy was like, yeah, no, let's go after more and more and more questions. So thank you. We are so grateful for y'all interacting with us and just being a part of the conversation, a part of the stream. It's really, really good. Um, I want to remind everyone that we are asking you to continue to stand with Israel. Yes, financially and for sure, prayerfully. Um, we have a battle cry card. It's a resource that we offer. It's only $5. You can either have one shipped to you in the mail or you can have a PDF. If you are a part of ODX.TV stage two or stage three, this is available online on ODX as a PDF. And it's just something that will help you to get a jumping pad or a launch pad for how to pray for Israel, how to pray for their government, how to pray for their borders. And that might even help kickstart you into praying for our own borders, because just like Israel has been attacked, it's a that can happen anywhere on the world. I don't think it's going to be as ferocious because the land of Israel belongs to God, but it's still something that can happen. There's terrorists all over the world. So if y'all would still be praying for Israel, standing with Israel, lifting them up, uh, declaring and proclaiming the word of God over them and over their people and standing with the Messianic church, especially the Messianic church that is there. Um, Ron Cantor, again, is one of those ministries that is a messianic ministry, and they are being the hands and feet of King Jesus there. And Open Door, we are partnered with them and with that ministry and with what's going on there. So, again, you if you support us, you support Open Door, that's what you're supporting. You are supporting the rescues that we've seen. You are supporting um, equipping the Israeli IDF soldiers so that they can go and stand out on the battle lines and they can they can protect their land they can protect their nation and we we're glad to be a part of that in other ways that you can support us or not support us but support the ministry and what we're doing support our mini ministry efforts is through tickets for the new beginnings conference um the tickets the ticket prices are going to go towards us rescuing kiddos out of trafficking. It's going to go towards ministry. This isn't going into any of our pockets. This is going into us getting to be the hands and feet of King Jesus. And what Pastor Troy talked about today, Rosh Hashanah 5784, the Ring of Fire eclipse that happened here recently on October 14th, um, this scripture, Deuteronomy 32, uh, 25, that is the 5,784th verse in the Bible He's going to be talking about this and more concerning the 5784 2024 prophetic word here at this conference. It's going to be a three day conference. It's Wednesdays, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And um, it, you can get tickets on ODX.TV or at opendoorexperience.com. Or if you would rather call in and talk to someone on the phone and have them lead you through the process or just purchase your tickets that way, you can do that as well. And another really, really cool prophetic resource that we have concerning the new year, concerning the 5784 year, are our two different calendars for this year. The Midnight Hour calendar goes with our New Beginnings Conference, and it focuses a bit more on the Gregorian calendar, which is 2024. And the Open Door calendar goes more with the 5784 uh, biblical or Jewish calendar. Both include aspects from both calendars, but it's just a really cool way that we wanted to share a really, really cool prophetic tool with you. So if you're interested in those at all, you can call us at 877-413-0888 or you can go to odx.tv 
and go to the Troy Brewer shop there and it'll take you to those calendars. They are $25 each or $45 all together in a bundle. Um, one more thing that's coming up on November 5th, um, Rod Parsley is going to be here preaching Sunday. He's He'll be here for both. Um, oh, excuse me. He'll be here for both services. So make sure if you can't join in person, you can watch here on ODX.TV or on YouTube. And if you're not able to catch it live, they will be posted. The service will be posted both on ODX.TV and on the Troy Brewer YouTube. And we mentioned numbers today, especially 111. You can find all of that information with a lot more detail right here in Pastor Troy's book, uh, book Numbers That Preach. There's so many uh, extra resources that go with that book. There's, um, oh, excuse me, I'm having a mind. DVDs, there we go. <laughs> There's DVDs from past conferences where he gets to dive into this more. There's the study guide. There's pocket references that you can carry with you. It's really, really cool. And it's such a really cool thing to have in your tool belt. I love it. I use it pretty about every day, especially with working here. So it's it's definitely something if you're more if you're interested in numbers, if you're interested in what how God is speaking through numbers, it is a great tool to have. And the profits go towards what we are doing in the ministry. And that's why we want to have a lot of things available for you so that you have a diversity of things that are fun, that are cool, that get you closer to God, that um, that are just something that helps you in your spiritual walk, in your walk with King Jesus, and something that allows us to be able to continue to be the hands and feet of King Jesus and do the things that the Lord has called us to do. And again, I want to thank you all so much for partnering with us, for standing with us, for um, being part of a ministry that is about the heart of King Jesus. It's we're we're so grateful. And so I'm um, closing out. I want to just show y'all a video that we got filmed from the Redemption Road Trip um, that we just had. And Pastor Trey mentioned Nimshi and uh, one of his other kiddos that he loves so very, very much. She's there. Her name is Marful. And it was the first time that they got to meet each other face to face and just seeing her run up to him because she knew him as a father and as a safe man in her life is absolutely um, amazing. So again, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you for partnering with us. Remember, we have these types of discussions uh, throughout the week, Mondays, not Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays on Prophetic Life. If you're interested in signing up for those or finding out more information, please go to odx.tv or reach out to support at odx.tv or call us at 877-413-0888. All right, guys, thank y'all so much. I hope you have a blessed day. When I first had the, the, the dream for a ranch, I also had the dream like, okay, we have to be able to house kids. We gotta be able to rescue kids out of trafficking. We gotta be able to rescue the rescuers. We gotta be able to do all those things. And today that actually becomes a fulfillment Yes. with Redemption Ranch Chiapas, Mexico. We're down here on the Guatemalan border in the southern part of Mexico. What do you think? We're standing on redeemed property. We are, man. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. Today I got to meet a little girl that we rescued several months back that I actually talked to on Zoom all the time, but I'd never actually seen her eye to eye face to face until today. So we come we come pulling up here on the ranch. We go through the gate that says Redemption Ranch on it. As soon as we drive up, we're in the van and Troy goes, there she is, yeah. there she is. And you see her take a step forward and they almost have to hold her back because you know you're on the van yep. and she's excited and Troy, Troy turned into the father that he is and says, there's my little girl. She came running down the hill and boom, man, she just about tackled me. Oh, dude. First time I've ever, first time we've ever seen each other face to face. You, you just, yeah, I can't explain it. I teared up, I had to go walk behind the van, get composed <laughs> and all that. I said, wow, this is what we get to do. There's so many more kids that actually need to be saved and every single one of them want to hug me like this little girl did today. Yeah. One of the things that we find as soon as we get here is that, man, this place is like seriously stunningly beautiful. The buildings are incredible. And of course we're not done with the buildings, but the ones that the structures that are already standing are more than capable of taking in, you know, untold numbers of kids. This is one of the houses that we're actually gonna be housing kids right here at Redemption Ranch. Look at this place. It's redonkulous. <laughs> I tell you, we still got a lot of work uh, left to go. 
But this, this room here is gonna be full of tons and tons of kids here pretty quick. It's the upstairs part, but there's two other parts. I gotta show you this. Uh, I can just imagine kids running up and down these stairs. Kind of give you an understanding. I mean, these are the kinds of bathrooms we're building. Boom, look at that, it's nice. So, you know, this is, we're actually doing this to American standards. But with that said, it is a lot of work. So like what? So what? I mean, if we're, if we're willing to rescue these kids, if we're willing to feed these kids, if we're willing to house these kids, why wouldn't we be willing to do it right? Come go with me. Here's another awesome room. Tons and tons of kids are gonna be down in here. It won't be very much longer. It will be completely finished. And this place will be full of kids. Now we have facilities that are already finished, but this, this house here is really important. And it wasn't built for rescue kids. It was built for American missionaries to stay in. We'll, we are gonna have to build a kitchen. We are gonna have to put a new floor in. Yeah, we're gonna have to put new walls in. And here's what I say, so what? I know how to rescue kids. I've been doing that for 28 years. I know how to feed kids. I know how to help kids. But here's what I also know. I can't do it without your help. Will you help me rescue these kids? These kids are waiting on us and they can't wait much longer. Guys, we're gonna go get them. Boom.